So good morning. Welcome back to the podcast. And this week's episode, I have a very special guest with me, a lady that I've got to know over the last number of years, who is an incredible lady. She is uh, incredibly knowledgeable. She has a huge amount of insight around our, our bodies and who we are as human beings. And I wanted to bring on the podcast because... Uh, I think it's so critical for us in business that we feel good ourselves and that we uh, know how our bodies operate and what we do. So I'm really proud and pleased that uh, she's a bit nervous, but I said to her, it's all going to be good. We're having a great conversation because she's sort of runs for this, needs some of this stuff. But Felicity J is on the podcast with me this morning. Good morning, my dear. How are you? Good morning. I'm really good, James. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So look, um, look, we've not got to know each other for for the last couple of years because of what you do at Inside Out Healing and, and some of the stuff you do. And, and um, uh, we're going to cover off and talk about a lot of things around the gut and around people's bodies and humans and how people are and health internally and why we are the way we are. And lots of makeups with huge amount of knowledge that you've got uh, around this subject area. But just before we, you know, before we get into sort of lots of the good bits, tell us a bit more about you and you know what's your background and what you do right now and 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 um, and how you help people a little bit. Just give give us a, a, a short introduction. Hmm. Thank you. Well, um, I guess my my journey started um, in kind of conventional medicine and nursing. I kind of, as I grew up, I think I always wanted to help people. And uh, when people used to ask that question, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, well, I want to be a nurse. I didn't really know what else I was. So I did go into nursing um, and I ended up having kidney problems and I'd had bowel problems for probably the first 24 years of my life. And um, I started getting into alternative things and finding, and I just took one look at a dialysis machine and I thought, there has got to be another way. Um, and then I started getting into nutrition and acupuncture and meditation and yoga and all sorts of things and meeting and like the doors started to open. Um, and my first training was actually in sort of massage and body work. And then I got into nutrition and did some herbs and homeopathy and one thing and another, and I ended up expanding. And when I was 24, I had my first colonic, and it literally changed my life. Um, and I didn't realize it, you know, something that, that I had felt had always been a thing for me could ever, ever actually be resolved. I thought I'd need to live with it for the rest of my life. Um, and so that's kind of how I kind of ended up getting into what I was doing. So I used to have regular colonics and then my therapist decided to go off and get married and have babies and move abroad. And I said, who am I going to send my clients to? And she said, well, was, you should train. I went, great, you can see me with all my bottom problems being a colonic therapist. And she said, well, actually, you know, we do nursing and massage and nutrition and stuff. It'd be brilliant. I'll send my clients to you. Fast forward. I, I, you know, I did the call. She did. I, she did. I did. She did. She did. Um, and yeah, so I, I took over her clinic in London, um, and I lived down here in Glastonbury in Somerset, and then um, a local therapist down here, whose clinic I used to use for my sort of residential clients, and people used to come and do detox retreats with me. She decided to retire, and so I um, was used to be back on the line there. Um, so I ended up getting planning permission, building my clinic on the back. And I have a very naturopathic approach to people because, um, yeah, so I've kind of come from lots of different backgrounds and I kind of incorporate a lot of what I do um, in the sessions that I have. So, yeah, so for me, the body is like the physical manifestation of the mind. So people don't just drive with a skin issue or with IBS or with migraines or with tinnitus or with whatever they have, mental health. Huge amounts of people have mental health issues. Huge amounts of people have um, gut issues and they don't realise that they're gut issues because they think if they poop sort of one to three times a day that their gut's okay, but actually not quite that. So we get. So we're going to do. So anyone listening to the podcast, by the way, if you're listening to this podcast when when you're uh, eating dinner, you might want to sort of maybe eat your sandwich off because we are going to talk about some stuff around around the gut and and uh, and some areas around that part which people think oh it's a bit weird. But the reason we're going to talk about it is because 
it is so important in the way in which we operate as human beings. And, um, we, you know, we're going to talk about some, some things that, you know, people talk about gut feel a lot, okay? And they say, especially in business and in, you know, people that are in sales or, or business, they talk about gut feel for situations. And your gut feel is important, right? And we're going to cover off the element around the whole gut uh, and the whole part of it. But, but, but just to sort of get into that conversation a bit more. So a lot of people might have seen a lot of stories around sort of the gut biome and gut health recently and you've been doing this for years right so you're a you're a pioneer of this sort of space you've been doing it for 20 years but now everyone's talking about oh how gut health is so important what does gut health really mean for people and why is it so important for people in their everyday sort of lives mm, that's a very broad topic it is a broad topic and very but, broad but, exactly. but, but, but do you know what I mean? The whole sort of subject of gut health has become really popular recently, hasn't it? Yeah, it really has, because there's more and more science that science is finally kind of catching up. So, you know, naturopathically, we've been talking about this for, for, for eons. You know, all disease starts in the gut. Um, there have been books written on this. You know, Bernard Jensen was kind of one of the early kind of pioneers in sort of gut health and stuff. And, uh, and I've certainly known about it for 50 years. So, um, and science is finally catching up. So as science catches up, so the media gets to hear about it and things like that. And we often talk about, oh, I've got a gut feeling about this. Oh, I've got a gut instinct. Now, when we talk about things like that, what you're actually talking about is your vagus nerve. Because our brain talks to our gut and our gut talks to our brain via two mechanisms. One is the enteric system, the, the kind of whole digestive system, and the other is through the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is the longest nerve in the body. And it sends constantly messages backwards and forwards. Um, our gut microbiome is um, it, it's basically, well, we have trillions and trillions of um, uh, bacterium, fungus, parasites, viruses, all these things that live in our gut. Um, and our gut essentially is a tube that goes from our mouth to our bum. And it varies all the way down, but we have more microbes in our gut, in our large intestine, than we do in our entire body. Wow. Um, well, yeah. So let's repeat that again. So let's repeat that again. So we have more, para- more bacteria. Yeah, in, yeah. In we have our- more microbes. We have more microbes in our large intestine than we do cells in our entire body. Wow. So, so basically, so what you're saying is that because of the nature, and I'm glad you talked about the vagus nerve, because I want to touch on the vagus nerve in a bit, because there's there's a lot of studies that show that if you strengthen the vagus nerve, it actually helps with longevity of life, doesn't it? Um, there's a lot of studies around it. But, so this idea that you've got this complex but incredibly powerful series of, of micro you know, elements in our in our human bodies, basically. And, and what in what you're saying is the gut is is pretty pivotal to the rest of the way the body operates, really. It's it's pretty pretty essential. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also it's set up in the very first few years of our life. So, you know, and, and it really also depends whether you live alone or whether you live with other people. Um, you know, when people talk about, I mean, there are so many things, there's social aspects to it as well. You talk about people, lonely people, because when you and I communicate, James, we're communicating, our microbes are communicating. That's actually what's happening, you know, behind the scenes. Um, sorry, repeat a question. You, I, I, no, I, was, I was just talking about how, empower, how powerful and important the gut is, the, the gut microbiome is. And you were saying that there's, you know, there's, there's these trillions of, of, of micro things, according to things, I don't quite know, I'm not, I'm not as good as it with you, either. but there's all these things going on there within the gut. And I guess, I guess for me, that, that means that there's all these, because all these things are happening and it's such a critical sort of area, it's like what you put into your gut and what you take out of your gut and what you change within your gut is critical to your own health and happiness and what you do as a human being, the basis is what you're saying. Absolutely. Absolutely right. So, yeah, and I've, I started saying that um, these things are all set up, you know, in our very early years. Yes. So, you know, depending on whether or not you're a vaginal birth or you're a C-section, whether you're breastfed, whether you won't, because the gut is actually sterile in when you're in your, when you're in utero, when you're, mother's pregnant with you your gut is sterile and it starts to build so every human being is born with an immature gut and as you pass through the birth canal that's your first experience of populating your gut um 
when you get breastfed, when you're around um, siblings, when you go to school, when you whatever, all the things, the animals, the things that you touch, there are microbes absolutely everywhere. All of those things start to populate. Uh, but some things stick, some things don't. Um, and there's, there are lo- there's loads of research, there's loads of studies, but we still don't know the names or the functions of a lot of the microbes that live within us. Um, but they all have a... Sorry? The carol, carol, you know, the uh, you, carol. But they, they all have a, a kind of a symbiotic relationship. Um, and we know that certain microbes, um, please don't ask me to name them, they've all got names about that long. Um, and they all have different functions and what and we're starting to be able to relate different microbes uh, that can be associated with different diseases. All right. So the thing is, if you have perfect health, nobody has perfect health. But if you have perfect health, you are basically asymptomatic. You have no symptoms of anything at all. You have healthy skin. You have a healthy sex life. You you don't get headaches. You don't get migraines. You know, you don't. You're you know everything. All your bones comes, are healthy. Everything's healthy. Everything's healthy. But the amount of people who are on um, sleep have sleep disorders who have um, anxiety disorders, antidepressants, people that take taken antibiotics. I mean, there is a place for everything. There's a place for medicine. But we are very quick to pop pills as a culture. Um, it, 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 I want to pick up on that. It's really interesting because um, – there's a, uh, and by the way, the reason I brought Felicity onto this podcast today is because I believe I, uh, there's a great saying I've always used, and I and I know a bit more because uh, as I've come to see you over time. The saying I use, which is you know, which is the body is the business. So if you're in business and you are you're running your own business or you're you know working for someone in business and you feel excuse my French shit and you feel crap and your body is aching and your body you're hurting and your mind is not great, whatever, you will not give your best work. Okay, you don't give your best to your clients your customers to the people around you your loved ones you don't give your best which is why and by the way and i'm and phyllis knows me well she knows i'm not a paragon of virtue i'm not a person that sits there and goes i eat all the right things and do it but the point being is if you if your body isn't at its best you won't give your best and i i went to see uh Felicity, Felicity a number of years ago because there were things that i was frustrated about that i didn't that i felt that were, were working for me and and you were able to sort of help help me fix some of those things and um and it's right. it's uh, but but the point being is is that if your body isn't if you're if you don't feel great as a human being right if you don't feel great in yourself and in your soul and your heart and your body you're not going to give your best are you you're not going to be your best person whatever job someone does absolutely absolutely i mean you know there's that whole thing years ago like you are what you eat um you know and we are what we eat and the thing is most people eat on the run you know they eat on the run the thing is to, to digest our food, we need to be in a relaxed place, not not talking and eating and, and walking around and rushing and quick crap a sandwich and help it down and fill a hole in your stomach and expect your body to kind of do its best. We all need maintenance. We all need sleep. We all need rest. We all need um, clean water. I mean, water, that's a huge thing, all right? That's a huge well, thing. I, back to water. I want to come back to water in a bit because you're a big fan of water, I know. So we'll come well, back. I am definitely. It's a hot topic for me. You're right. Um so yeah, I mean, most people don't. Our bodies adapt the whole time. Our bodies are busy adapting, uh, adapting to our environment, adapting to the needs and the stresses and the strains that we put on ourselves. Uh, we don't get enough sleep. We don't get enough exercise. We don't get enough clean air. We don't get enough clean water. We don't eat enough variety of foods. The amount of people that come to see me who say, "Oh, well, I'm very limited. I can't eat this. I can't eat that. I can't eat the other." Um, I'm not sleeping well. I'm on this medication, that medication. It's like, oh, your poor body. How can we find a balance? How can we get you back into balance? Because the thing is, Jane, is what's right for you isn't, isn't necessarily right for me. And we all have different needs. So it's a matter of how do we work out what your needs are. Um, and that's a very individual thing. I mean, sorry. <laughs> 
Let me let me be brilliant. We've just done it's brilliant. And actually, I want to pick up on that because I talk. We talked a little bit when we had meetings before about Zoe and this and so some of the tools that you now sort of work around the microbiome and how there are some tests that people can take that enable them to see that what, what how different foods react to different people, isn't it? And there's some different ways in which you know people know that obviously because people might be gluten free. You know, they talk about being gluten intolerant or eat, you know certain foods they can't eat. But that's actually a really a really key, key thing that medicine is moving to now, isn't it? Is that element of Actually, what you know, you might be, you know, your body right might react well to bananas, but my body won't. My body might react in a different way to bananas, and I might, I might react certain ways to eggs, and you might react in a different way to eggs. And there's there's a huge amount of science and information about this now to help people get that personal sort of approach to their own care, isn't there? Absolutely. I mean, Zoe is 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 um, Zoe is still in its experimental stages. It's had a lot of money and a lot of publicity shoved towards it which is why it's over all social media and everything else and they certainly do some great testing and all of that but it's still in its experimental stages so what they and they their main focus is about blood sugar and uh, they're still gathering information so you know every past person that joins that is gathering that they're part of their a, a bigger study yes. yeah so that's what they're doing. Um, I happen to work with um, a company who, um, who whose stuff is already proven, um, and they have patented software which um, not it doesn't only test the microbiome. What it does is it tests the DNA of the microbiome, and I don't know that any other company does that. And I'm not talking about your personal DNA, where you come from, and your origins, and all that, yeah. which is also very interesting. Um, DNA has got like these. Do you know what DNA looks like? It's like this double helix. You've got like it's like a step ladder, and each yep. step ladder has two parts of it to make the step. And each yep. one of those things is responsible for. Um, I don't. I, I mean, I'm not a scientist, and I can't go into too many details around it all. But I can only. Um, but it's, it's they are. It's responsible for making um, enzymes and to help you break down food. And it's it, it's it's how we digest our our food, but also how we digest our life. So. You know, some people have strong DNA, some people have weaker DNA, some people have, um, you're, you're born with like genetic weaknesses and genetic strengths. So we're all very different. One of the things that I do is erythology, um, which is looking at the irises. So we can look at very much the individual constitution. Um, and, you know, and again, strengths and weaknesses. So when people turn up with particular issues, whatever they happen to be, you can look at what their strengths and what their weaknesses are. And we look at herbs and we look at nutrition in order to be able to, to, to kind of like boost the weak bits, if you like. Um, and, but also we can look at like things like, um, oh, well, let's go back to testing for a minute. So I started working with this company um, called uh, Your Gut Map. And um, yeah, I mean, they so they test the, the DNA of the points of and they're able to spot whether your DNA and your in your microbiome is basically what works for you, basically, I'm guessing what you're saying. So what they do is that they they look at what is and then they know from the various ones that they know are good ones and bad ones, what you, what specific foods would be good for you. It's not a general thing. It kind of turns nutritional its head, to be honest, because there are things that you know, we know that there are certain big allergens, you know, whether it's sort of um, caffeine or sugar or dairy or gluten, um, you know, that those are kind of like major allergens, corn, stuff like that. So what I would do with somebody who's got lots of allergy reactions, just take them off for six weeks, take them off um, all the known allergens. But what this does is it takes the guesswork out of it. So what it will do is it will give you uh, specific foods to feed your specific bacteria that you need to boost so and you can have diet plans you can have a, i mean a massive list so rather than saying i can't eat this i can't eat that and i can't eat the other it, there is a huge list of things that you can eat that are good specifically for you 
Yeah. And this, this is really interesting, actually, because one of, one of the things that, um, and by the way, I'll tell a story later on when, once people have, you know, of how I first came to meet you about your ideology, which is your issues. When I first met Phyllis, it was, it was bizarre because, uh, it was, she, she knew, so she, this lady knows her stuff, actually, which is, but what, what, else, what, else, but let's just go into, obviously, there's a huge amount of science and medicine, and I'm not a medicine, definitely not a scientist, so you're not, it's like, but you know a lot about it. But what are the typical signs that people come to you of a, of a, of an unhealthy, you know, gut, for example, and, and where something's not quite right. And without getting too detailed, obviously we know clients that come in and sort of talk about, well, what are the most of the signs that, you know, like for example, I came to you with bad knees, right? And, you you know, and I talked about the fact that I had, my knees weren't very good and they still aren't the best, but I, I'm working on it. It's a bodily element. But what are tell us is some of the signs that people come to you with that are sort of, you know, un, they're signs of unhealthiness. And, and how have you, what you know? How how do you go about solving that? Because that's the, quite a difficult thing, right? But but talk to me in your process, because you you were very good at being able to say, well, that's causing that, which is causing this, which is which is mad. Okay, so one of my first tools. So I'm not allowed to say cure, and I'm not allowed to say diagnosis. Right, right. Just yeah, not cure. Okay, you didn't cure me because I don't uh, even mean. Okay. We are all ongoing processes, okay, and it's always a matter of how we find the balance, and and the symptoms that people have. Okay, so looking at your eyes, for example, it shows me that you are prone to inflammation. So there will be certain things that you will eat that will create inflammation in your body. And many things like stress will cause inflammation. There are, so, so it's just that it's not one thing. So when somebody comes to see me, I want to know what are their, why are they coming? You know, what, what are they coming for? Um, and I have quite a large toolbox that I can kind of dip in and out of. Um, so sometimes it's an emotional thing. Sometimes I'll just do some NLP with them and then do a nice cleanse because I think we all need to cleanse. In the same way, we all need to shower and bath. We all need to we all need to cleanse our insides and our outsides. So you know whether we have a whether we feel it or we don't. As soon as you've had internal cleansing, you really feel it. And you feel better. You just do. Um, you know, we can talk about auto intoxication. We can talk about what happens when instead of the body processing, filtering things out and then it all coming out. I mean, a lot of people come to me with um, IBS, constipation, yeah. sleep issues, skin issues, um, lung issues, allergies, food sensitivities, bloating, um, no sense. All, which, all, all of which are making them feel rubbish and affecting their day to day business life and their work life, right? Can't concentrate, foggy brains all of the above so and all of it all of it without fail is to do with the gut so cleansing the gut resetting the microbiome is an absolutely phenomenal thing to do and so during lockdown when it when life went considerably quieter um i was still allowed to work because i was um you know, some medical, something or the other, some loophole or other. Um, I was allowed to work, but obviously I wasn't working quite as much. I had been involved in another company that did uh, microbiome resets and their products were so expensive. They were extortionate. And I just thought, I'm going to be able to kind of put, put some products on the market that will that will actually be affordable and great quality. So I then went off and worked with some other people and have got um, a series of products now. Um, available for my clients and anyone else that wants to. Um, and uh, I'm an active user of, and I, I should say, I know, at that point, I'm an active user of two of um, a couple of Fleet uh, Fleet's products. So I have a, but the black powder, as we always call it, is um, yeah. someone calls it volcano dust. If ever you, you know, ask me, so my morning routine is, I wake up in the morning, and I have a, uh, a, a water um, purified water with a this black powder that basically goes in there and you've always called it it's, it's basically you say it's like a face mask for my gut so even if i've had a um a, you know the last couple of days i've not eaten as i should be and i've not been as healthy as i should be it's basically a way in which it's a face mask for my gut to cleanse out my gut basically so that's an example of and by the way this isn't doing this to, you know to promote products as such because but, but that's an example of where i've used it and it's actually helped me because for me personally it, it sort of does it, it does sort of just clearly clears it clears things yeah it draws it draws it's about understanding i mean like you know we're, we only know what we know and we don't know what we don't know and there's a lot of science that we don't know but science is catching up with what we instinctively know um and what we do know um and things that we've been taught certainly things i've been taught over the last 40 years being a practitioner um and it's really worthwhile 
in the same way that you would look after the outside of your body, so you look after the inside of your body. Now, I'll pick you up on that because that's a really important point, I think, that, again, it came a little bit around sort of, you know, people, if people are cut on their arm, they'd literally look at it and go, wow, I've got, I've got a cut. And and if that cut was pretty severe, they'd, they'd, they'd worry because there'll be blood pouring out and whatever else, and they'd get... But yet, just because you can't see the inside of your gut or the inside of your body, you sort of don't worry about it, right? It's, it doesn't, and it's it's the same thing. Yeah, I mean, also with, um, I mean, it's interesting because when it comes to, in England, we don't talk about things, we don't talk about emotions, we don't talk about sex, and we don't talk talk about our bowel habits, and we certainly wouldn't let anybody near or bite our bottoms. So um, it's a kind of a cultural thing. And yet, if you go to, if you go to Europe. You know, they have, uh, I mean, these are basic conversations. I don't mind talking about any of it, of course, um, but then I'm a bit unusual like that. Um, and um, But you go into Europe, um, they give you suppositories, they give you enemas, they talk about these things very, very openly. Um, and they even have toilets that are designed that have got a shelf on them so you can actually examine your stool as, it, you know, when, when, you, when, you've, uh, when you've had a movement. So over here, we just don't even talk about it. So it's a very taboo subject. And men, I mean, obviously, I see more. I see probably 70% women, 30% men, maybe 60, 40. Um, because men are very funny about, oh, dear, I don't want some woman sticking something up my bum. Does it mean I'm gay? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, 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 no. Do you shower? Yes. Well, you should shower the inside too. So there are there are some no nos. It's not for everybody, but it is for the majority of people. Um, and, yeah. and, and, the, and the only people, you know, and again, as someone that's you know, had a treatment like that, I'm not going to talk about it in the inside figure of this because I don't want to put people off the, the, the rest of the podcast. But you know, I've seen the impact it's had and, and helped me with. Um, what is it about that that you mentioned about the fact that people are fearful about it? Is it, it is just a fear factor, I guess, isn't it? Because they probably because they don't know what it's going to. Look how it's going to work, or that. What is it that people are fear are fearful of when it comes to, to to those things? You think somebody putting something up their bum because it's like, ooh, and what that might feel like, and what it might mean, and blah 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 blah. Um, whether it's going to hurt or not, um, you know, they, they often people will do Google searches, um, which often is not filled with very um, very useful information. I've done over eight thousand colonics. Um, and, you know, I've been working for 23 years doing colonics and, you know, I've never seen perforated bowels. I've never seen that. Um, it, you know, the conversation goes much deeper and I can go into it. I'm not sure how much, how much depth. Yeah, no, we're not going to into it. We're maybe, if people have got, well, look, the whole purpose would say is they can get an insight and they can reach out to you directly if they want to and we'll talk about how you can, people can do that afterwards. But I the reality think- I'm going to interrupt you. Sorry, um, I would encourage people um, to get over their hang-ups and reach out to a good naturopathic um, colonic therapist and have some colonics. I think it's part of. People say, "Well, how often should I have them?" Well, that depends on what you're doing, and it depends on what your issue is. But if you're a, a normal, healthy person per se, to have one four times a year, one at change of each season, one every three months, lovely. I like to have them every two months because it makes you feel fantastic. Some people that have got very lazy bowels and people that have got long bowels and whatever it is, they can have them manage more often. It depends on how you react and respond. You know, people have got ME. A lot of people have got ME face. And we're talking again about leaky guts. So we're talking about how do we strengthen the gut. And colonics may not be ideal for them a lot. However, we can do a lot with herbs. So how we can plug the holes, how we can strengthen the immune system. 80% of our immune system is in our gut. Okay, so, just, okay, so I was going to ask you about stats about the gut. So 80% of our immune system, so the way we fight off colds, the way we fight off anything, is down to what's in, in our gut. Wow. Okay, that's, that's a big number, isn't it? So pretty much four out of five things that are going, let's say, say conditions or issues that people have can be fixed as a result of their gut. Not fixed is the wrong word, but is down to their gut. Yeah, and they got strength in the microbiome. I mean, you have this, you have a certain capacity, i.e., you have a certain amount of seats at your table. And depending on who the guests are, depending on how many you have of each, you don't want the baddies, you want the goodies. But the more stressed you are, the more, uh, you know, the more stressed you are, the, the, I don't want to be judgmental about it, but the, the kind of the worst lifestyle you have, the, weak, the weaker your system is going to be. 
So how can people find an easy way to manage? You don't have to be on a cleanse all the time. You need to have an 80-20 lifestyle, but you need to know what works for you. And so for me, testing is the way to do that because then it just, it tells you who are you as a unique human being and how can you be the best person that you can possibly be in the lifestyle that you've chosen to have, you know, and what can you do to support that? You know, you do a lot of exercise, you know, that keeps your head clear. It allows you to kind of focus it. You know, that's, you've got a strong system, James, you know, not everyone has that, that, that no, not everyone has that strength. You know, some people say, gosh, why can't I do this? And they can do that, but why can't I do that? It's like, well, let's have a look at who you are as an individual person. You go to see the doctor with a symptom, they give you a drug, your body has to press it and they go, next, please. Yeah. yeah. Whereas actually, whereas, and I think this is something I, I, I'm i very much of that, you know, because as a, you know, we talked down the past, I've I've put a lot into people who have seen an idea, I do a lot about cold therapy. So I do cold water dips. I, oh. I do, which is, um, you know, it, breathing so breathing again which is sort of simple so these are techniques and methods now that you know we're seen as being a bit sort of wacky you know a few months and years back but are now becoming more mainstream because they do fundamentally help people they help people overcome the challenges that they have and, and deal with and um it's this sort of element of you know it's becoming more mainstream i think do you, th- and do you think the world is changing because i think you know i i feel like it is a little bit that we're moving away from this sort of like you said the doctor sees you on another pill move on to people going, there has to be a better way than that. Yeah, but the thing is, with publicity now, with, with social media, with all of that other stuff, there's a lot of more of this becoming mainstream, whether it's Wim Hof, who was, um, I mean, he was just kind of like a freak and a quack and a this and a that, um, and known as the Iceman, blah, blah, blah. And it was only when they started doing scientific experiments on him that they realised that actually he can control his blood pressure, he can control his breath, he can stay underwater for hours and hours and that he can live on a he spent three days on an iceberg in in, in shorts you know um and they plugged him into all sorts of things and then they actually he's now made he's changed some in from what they actually believe so using blood um sorry using breath oxygenation um and using like these cold cold dips and ice baths and all of that i mean it's fantastic for the lymphatic system you have a lymphatic constitution uh, so your blue eyes. So most people in this country have blue eyes, although in the world there are actually more brown eyes than blue eyes. But that's a whole other thing that we can. That's a whole other topic. But um, we need our sister. If we knew how our systems actually worked and how we can support them, if we were taught this as a child growing up, we would have. We would feel much more empowered as human beings. And I hope when I see people that they leave with more knowledge about who they are, how they're made up, and what they can do to help themselves. Um, in practical, easy ways. It doesn't have to be woo-woo. You know, it can be practical, easy ways. And it's powerful. And I'm going to tell a story about when the first time I met Fess, um, it was actually about, it was about 15 years ago I met. She, she, she didn't remember me sadly because she, she's seen so many people. But then the last few years, we've we've uh, we've worked together a bit more. But I remember going in to see her and, uh, and I said to her, you know, these are a couple of things that I'm sort of not happy with. And she looked at me and she looked at me in the eye. This is, and she looked at me and said, you have explosive poos, don't you? Like, <laughs> I, and I remember her looking, literally, I'd walked into the clinic and she looked at me as if I was like, wow. And I remember thinking at the time, mm, I'm not going to go into these days, but I remember thinking, this lady knows something. Uh, and it was like, wow. And, and, you, and you were able to look at that from literally looking me in the eyes, which I think was the geology thing is, is, is the bit you, you mentioned about that. But look, I'm not, so, so to me, all I'll say is that, you know, she, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a salesperson, but I'm also, a, 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 not a cynic is the wrong word, but you know, People have to work hard to show me their, their their skills and knowledge. And within like 10 seconds, when she was like able to go look and say, this is what I think is happening. And I was like, yeah, this lady knows her stuff. But just going around gut health, uh, you know, what well, people obviously might be listening to this and going, okay, well, quite, they, and they might be listening to this in America or South Africa or wherever, and they can't go see you directly. But what are some of the simple things they can do if they do feel like they're they're, they're, they're you know, feeling a bit bloated or their gut feel doesn't feel great or, or whatever. What are some of the simple things that they can do to actually just improve their gut health? Is there, you know, you just talk about water because water is a big thing you talk about a lot, but what are two or three simple things that people can do if they listen to this somewhere around the world and they might not be able to come and see you in Glastonbury? What could they do to improve their gut health? Go and find a local pr- practitioner who can help them. That would be the first thing because I think we all need guidance. Okay, so clean water, and what I mean by clean water is water that does not come out of mains taps, you know, stuff that's like a decent filter, uh, decent electrolytes, 
um, live food, um, enzymes. Get your, do a day a week. Do a day a week uh, of fasting. You know, just do water fast or do a juice fast. Do get get a nice uh, a fresh juice, not juices that, that that are bought off the shelf because they've all been heated and damaged, but something that's got live enzymes in it. You know, um, having a variety, a varied diet, having lots of good fiber. Um, you can do enemas on yourself. You can do water enemas, coffee enemas, herbal enemas, all sorts of things. Um, you can take herbs. You can get cleansing herbs all over the world. Um, I'll give you lists of them if you like. But I mean, there's, there's, you know, what can people do for gut health? I mean, some people say, you know, eat fermented vegetables. So have things like have a mouthful of sauerkraut with each meal. Some people that I don't like cabbage, but it's like fine. But um, well, because I mean, just mention because Tillis Bacter is, yeah, I think you and him are aligned in many respects. Even though they're they're doing a study that he's aligned about gut health and eating. Well, he talks about the five, you know, kaffir and um, you know, kombucha and those five, you know, those those fermented. What what is it about those, you know, those 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 kimchi and all that? So what is it about those fermented elements that helps the gut then? Okay, so it's quite random. Um, but um, anything that's fermented, our, our gut, our large intestine is one big fermenting machine. That's what it does. It ferments things, it breaks things down into nutritional elements that your body can absorb and utilize for general function. So kefir, um, it can be water kefir, it can be milk kefir, it can be um, vegan kefir. Kefir, it's, it's, it's a... Um, it, it make it breaks things. It so it'll break things down, and it will give you bacteria. But it gives you lots and lots and lots of bacteria. So how much do you, do you know? People say, "Oh, I really like this kombucha." They're actually addicted to the caffeine in it, um, or they sort of drink it because it's good for them. But they still get bloated. It's like it's all very well pouring loads of probiotics in, but are they the right type? Yeah. You know, it's so quite rapid. The testing, which is going to make you go the exactly. testing. Yeah. But the answer is everything in everything in moderation. You know, everything in moderation. So, by all means, have have some kefir. You know, by all means, light yogurt, great. But if you're a vegan or you have an allergy to dairy and stuff like that, find another way to get to dip. There are there, there's so many alternatives now. We can do stuff at home. We can make things at home. Um. That yeah, it's just a matter of knowing what's right for you. And again, don't overdo it just because it's good. I have lots of vegans that come here, and they're all addicted to sugar and caffeine. Oh, and I eat raw this, and I eat raw that, and I eat raw the other. Yeah, and you don't sleep, and you're hyperactive, and you're wondering why and what's going on with them. That is, it's like let's find your balance. So there's a lot of publicity out there. It's a really interesting point you mentioned because I knew a guy, I know a guy, and uh, yeah, I won't say his name because it's not fair, but who's a vegan and talks about the vegan lifestyle, but is significantly severely over you know, overweight. And, and, you know, actually it's, you know, yeah. uh, it, it sounds awful to say, but he's just got addicted to vegan Greg sausage rolls, right? Which, you know, which, <laughs> which ultimately can, yeah, and all the other things as a result of it. So, but, but, but what are, you know, people talk a lot about, you know, one of the things I you know, talk to people about now and I, a lot of people I follow will say, especially when you're eating foods, it's, it's eating foods that, you know, they also say foods that grandma would make. You know, grandma never used processed stuff, right? Grandma used to get the, the vegetables or the fruit or, or, or the, or the elements from, you know, you know, she'd make things that were from the fresh, from the, from the sea or, or from, from animals or whatever, but it was, it and, she, and, she, and she would cook, and she would cook with lard. So I'm not suggesting lard is necessarily great, but the, the, the fact is that animal fats, don't damage when you heat them. So if you're a vegan, the only oil that you should really cook with is actually avocado oil. Because avocado oil is something that's, that somebody can take away with. There you go. Um, the avocado oil also doesn't spoil. Everything has a, a temperature that it will spoil at. Now, what happens is with oils, they're basically long-chain fatty acids. And when you heat them, it damages part of the chain which then becomes a free radical, which then the body has to then treat as a toxin. So when you buy fried foods pre-made or you use vegetable oil, or sometimes depending on what you're frying, it's, oh, well, I only cook a lot of oil. It's like, great, as long as it's not above a certain temperature. Above a certain temperature, it starts to smoke, forget it. You know, you're damaging it, your body's eating it, and your body has to process that. So if you're talking about nutrition, you need stable, whole foods that won't damage and that's that is a challenge for people, like you say, because they are. I you know there's lots of companies that are you know, coming out now, but people are busy. 
and you know that it's it's difficult isn't it because people are on the go like you said at the start they're on the go they're having to to do things all the time which is you know to run around from places they've got families what what, what whatever so it, it is a challenge for people but you know how you know the guest i guess what you're saying is just try and make that bit of time it's a bit like you know i've always used it it's, you know in sales and business you know when people are talking about doing campaigns i'm like well if rubbish in rubbish out if you put rubbish you know if you find if you if you if you put rubbish data in you get rubbish data out and it's the same with the body i guess ultimately isn't it if you if you put rubbish in you're gonna you're gonna the outcomes are gonna be poor well the thing is everything has to get filtered I would sooner filter things before they come into the body rather than out. And, that, and also because we're talking about an eighty twenty lifestyle, you know, you go out and you have dinner and they made it with fried foods and shit oils and whatever it is, great. Um, that's your 20, okay? But when you're at home, you have a choice what you cook with and how you cook. But if you don't know, you don't know. So what I like to do is educate people so they can go home and make different choices, you know. So rather than buying pre-cut vegetables, cut them yourself. Right, there's you know, rather than being packaged in artificial surroundings, you know, buying organic. Oh, but organic carrots are so much more expensive than non-organic carrots. Yeah, but if you broke it down and actually worked out what was the soil that it was grown grown in, you know, what are the sprays that we used, blah blah blah. blah. There is, it goes on and on and on. So it's better that what you put in, your body can utilize and process better than, you know, I mean, okay, our skin, for example. It's the largest elimination organ of the body. Whatever you put on your skin goes into your body. If it's got your deodorant, antiperspirant, moisturizers, stuff that has E numbers and whatever goes in your skin, it goes into your body. Your body has to filter that stuff out. Why not use natural products? It's not like they don't work. Plenty of fabulous products out there that work. You know, fluoride toothpaste, why would you want to use rat poison and neurotoxin? You know, why would you want to put that in your mouth? Don't you? Do you know what you, it seems to be, you, you just hit on a really interesting subject there because I, I this is maybe you'll tell me off when I come and see you next. But I was looking literally at my toothpaste the other day, and, I've, and I, it is bizarre you mentioned that. And I was looking at it and all these ingredients, and I was like, yeah, this is a, you know, I have to say, it's a Colgate toothpaste, right? I'm going to be able to. And I looked at it and I'm going, what the bloody hell are some of those things in there? So you're telling me there's poison in some of my toothpaste? Fluoride. They're now, they're now producing some of the water. They, 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 they've always sold it as a, this will prevent um, tooth decay. Yeah, yeah. You know, caries is a whole, is a whole, that's a whole other subject which we probably won't go into in this yeah, yeah, yeah. But as far as cleaning your mouth, because we are microbiome, we have a microbiome in our mouth. We don't want to be using Listerine and, and uh, whatever. Use salt if you want to use salt. You know, if you want to have a salt wash, have a salt wash. That's great. That doesn't harm your microbiome, but it does kill off the nasty microbes. If you want the cheapest, go on. There you carry on. I was going to say, you know, people say, well, what do you, what, what toothpaste do you use for the skin? I will always, I mean, I have a whole variety of different ones that I use. Sometimes once a week, um, I use uh, bicarb. I dip my toothbrush in bicarbonate soda, dead cheap. Brush my teeth doesn't taste great. My God, all gums feel amazing. Teeth feel amazing. It's a natural whitener. Doesn't cost doesn't cost the earth, you know. There are loads of really good fluoride free toothpastes out there, either online or at the health food shop. Absolutely loads. There are about fifty different varieties. Depends on what floats you boat, what you like, whether you like creams or gels or powders or this or that. Some people some people use charcoal in their house. Again, great whitening, great for absorbing toxins. We love charcoal. Charcoal's fantastic. Makes everything black and it makes a mess, but we love it. You know, but you know, I, I'm a big fan of watching Ed Stafford and those sort of programs. And when he's like, literally on, you know, he's been dropped on an island from somewhere and he's got nowhere somewhere to live. He washes his teeth with, with carbon, right? So he washes teeth for carbon because because that's his, his equivalent of doing it. So, and I guess that's the thing, isn't it? We're conscious of time. We, you know, talk to you. We we do talk when I meet up with you. We do talk for for a long time about lots of different things. But um, the the goal of today was about just trying to educate people more and to help people. Not educate sounds a bit arrogant, but but to help people understand that that ultimately whatever that person is feeling today if you listen to this and you're feeling i've got a a symptom of a bad back stroke a uh you know headache a you know like you say it's a you know a, a feeling an inflamed gut whatever it is you know most of it can be solved by starting to look inside your body right than necessarily out i guess is the point that you want to talk about isn't it that's why you're inside out healing basically there you go that's it that's exactly where the, where the name popped up from how it may means ago that was 
No, and, 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 I, and I always say to people, I, and I do, you know, I've met you, and you know, you, you know, I know you may not say you're at your, your age, but but I know you look incredible. You remember me telling me your age once. I was like, blimey, she looks good for that age. So you're you're an epitome of that yourself, aren't you? Because you've yeah. looked after your body for a long period of time, and that's why you're fit and healthy, and you're able to do the stuff that you do. But at you know, and I'm not. I know you've got, you know, I wouldn't say your age, but you've got a family and young granddaughter and stuff. And people might think she can't be a grandmother, but you are, right? I am indeed. Yeah, I'm in my sixties now. So. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. That's the thing. I think if you listen to this and think you're watching this and thinking, goodness me, you know, you've, you know, you don't. I look. I've seen sixty-year-old ladies, and you don't look like, you know, you don't look like that, as you know. So, um, it, and all that's down to you just looking after your body and keeping, keeping a track of what you're doing and how you're doing it, right? Yeah, and it's again, it's eighty twenty. It's not, it, and and it becomes part of your lifestyle. You know, happiness is a huge thing. You know, happiness, relaxation, meditation, exercise. You know, there are so many things relating. We need people. We need each other, you know. And, you know, we, there are so many basic human needs that we have. And our focus and our energy is very much on work, on career, on, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, on all of that stuff. And actually, um, it's like we're such unique beings and we all have unique needs. Um, and I would welcome people to go and have a look at some of the um, – some of the which call them testimonials and things on my website because a lot of people think, um, wow, you know, I came in with one thing, but actually I've been all these other things have kind of gone away, and that you know it's not it's not such a difficult process. Or people, I mean, get curious. I'd encourage people to get curious and yeah, and sure. and just think that if there's something wrong with your mind, don't think that it's not related to your gut because it is. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a really great point you made there about get curious and and i always say to people you i have you to blame i blame you for for, for me giving up coffee and i used to love coffee and uh, i used to absolutely you know i went to see phyllis about three years ago and moaned about my knees and my knees like i you know for any of those instances i have osteoarthritis and my knees my knees aren't great then they, they have times where they're worse than others but actually one thing a i noticed is a when i'm eating clean and and you know continuing lifestyle my knees do feel better which actually supports that but i remember you saying to me literally you know three years ago well you know coffee's a coffee's an inflammatory and you and then everyone would say to me oh no well you can go decaf it's like no it's the coffee that and the tea that's the this the caffeine that seems like it's that those elements are inflammatory right and um i moved on to to other things and even though i miss it now and again i've never gone back there so it's it's uh i, I know you were big I'm, i remember going to see bliss and i was saying oh i used to drink red bull and some of these pepsis and you were like uh just you know that was one of your like don't drink those things because <laughs> what they do for you inside health. And I haven't drunk them since. And again, you know, I'm not saying I'm, you know, but I'm, I'm definitely better than I, than I, than I was. And, and those sort of things are just, unfortunately, they're very prevalent right now, aren't they? They're so, I mean, coffee is a huge one, right, for people. And, and because people are drinks. exhausted. That's because people, energy drinks are huge because people are exhausted. People are exhausted. They can't focus, you know, and they're, they're, it's like, it's like kind of like, I can't get up, so I have coffee. I can't get down, so I have sleeping pills. You know, and they're, and they're, and then more and more toxic. And the toxic load in their body is absolutely massive. And if we can come to kind of start to find some kind of a balance, but to know what the balance is and to keep up with lifestyle, it's a matter of how do we keep ourselves, you know, with a good lifestyle. I and mean, when it comes to basic nutrition, if nutrition is the fuel that you stick in, you know, your, your the fuel that you stick in your car. If you stick diesel in a petrol engine, it ain't going to go very far. You know, and if you run out of fuel, you ain't going very far either. Well, the fuel in our bodies is the food, the, 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 the food and the water and the air that go into our bodies is the basic things that our bodies need in, rich, in, in order to function. And the problem, one of the main problems, which is often overlooked, is the fact that we are mineral short. The, you know, the, the soil that our food is grown on, maybe uh, 50 years ago, there were like 75 different minerals in the soil. And today, on average, there are about 10 or 11 maximum. Yeah. So even though the apples look better and the tomatoes look better and that this looks better and that looks better, the fact is that they are actually very, very short of minerals. And so people go, oh, right, I'm going out to get a multivitamin and a multimineral. But most of the minerals that you buy in a pot off the shelf are ground up rock and they're too big in your body and they're not in the right um, balance and your body can't really utilize them. So Something that people can do when they're abroad and they don't want to see me is get some decent minerals into your body. You can do that via seaweed. Seaweed contains all the balancing natural minerals. Because- right, seaweed, I get the Chinese, you mean? No, I'm joking. 
Yeah. I'm joking. I'm joking. Before you go there, right, let's not go there. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Seaweed, so you, I interrupted you said seaweed. You said seaweed. So you interrupted seaweed is something that's really good for you. I never knew that. She never told me that. Seaweed is a really good thing to eat. Yeah. Seaweed is a fantastic thing to eat. It contains the whole, and there are different seaweeds that do different things. I mean, apart from the fact that they're very high in iodine and, and things, they also contain the whole, um, the whole mineral spectrum. So any plant derived minerals are good. Fulvic minerals, shivajit, any of those things are really, really great because. It's when they, they've taken up, they've, the plants have taken up the big minerals and made them into tiny, min, min, minuscule um, quite, um, size so your body can actually utilize them. So, so ionic minerals are also good as long as you have a, a, a full spectrum of minerals. So minerals would be one of the first things. And without minerals, your body can't actually um, utilize vitamins, most vitamins. So... There's a whole, how do we create balance? These are basic things. This is like basic nutrition. You know, the the, the things I grow in my, in my greenhouse and in my garden, I mean, things smell like they should smell and they taste like they should smell. They taste like they should taste, which is what I mean. And I pour seaweed over, over my compost heap and I put seaweed in, I, I feed seaweed to my, my greenhouse things. So when I eat them, they've got minerals in them. Um. Yeah, sorry, how about I digressing? Yeah, you have it. You have it. It's just because I know I know you're, you're passionate about what you talk about, and I think it's great. And then I'm I didn't realize about the seaweed stuff, so I'll have to pick up some some, some elements around that we can go for. But look, does first. that mean I can eat sushi? Does that mean I can eat sushi? Yeah, you can eat sushi, but the raw fish. If you've ever seen it under a microscope, not so sure about it. It creates a lot of havoc in your gut. I know people love it. Fish. I didn't know. So again, so you're going to tell me that I, 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 there's me thinking I'm being healthy and my smoked salmon and my eggs. Is that not good for me then, smoked salmon? <sighs> is it not good for me? It's not a bad question. That's not a bad question. Is it? Is it okay, what you just said there is it's it's non, non-cooked fish, but there we go. So maybe I, but maybe let's leave that for another time. Let's leave that for when I'm met. When I'm, but by the time I, thing, then... I have things to say about it. First of all, most of it, you need to look at the packaged ingredients because most of it has sugar in it. That's the first thing. Um, a lot of it's farmed. A lot of it's... Um, I mean, it's better than tuna, which is very, very high in mercury and heavy metals. And heavy metals is a big issue, whether it's heavy metals in your mouth or it's heavy metals in the food that you're eating. Anyway, that's a whole... Again, a whole but the black powder is very good at taking all that out. But anyway, let's move on. We'll move on. But look, look, so it, it's been great to, to chat to you about and you've, you know, you've got so much knowledge. And I know you've... You know, uh, I've been talking to you about you know this is you've not done many podcasts before, and I've said to you you should do podcasts because you do have a huge amount of knowledge and, and insight to share with people. But I guess actually that's the other thing that I think is really important is what you've helped people do. And I think I always look at my work with people and talk to people about the impact they make and the outcomes they make. And you know, the final sort of question for you is you know you've you've changed a lot of lives for people, haven't you? There, I mean, the lady that that messaged me the other day that we put in contact when she and, and she was F investing, she was like, you know, she's changed my life, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's 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 a great thing for you that you've been able to help you know so many thousands of people over the years, and that's why I'm keen for you to come onto podcasts and talk. We do because you've been able to help so many people, haven't you? And how does that feel for you personally when you do that? Honestly, it makes me feel very humbled and emotional, and it makes me feel very blessed because there are people out there who can change the world. Um. And if I can help one person at a time, and that person can then help other people, it has a ripple effect, and it makes me feel very purposeful in the world, and it makes me feel very blessed, really, to be doing something that can enrich people's lives, to help them feel empowered. Because the my intention when somebody comes to see me is really that when they leave me, that they feel empowered to change their lives in a positive way. And to reclaim their health, which is their birthright. Yeah, love that, love that, and, and definitely you're you're doing that for lots and lots of people. And look, there's lots of questions that people might have. They might have MP if they have got questions, they can um, whether they can reach out to you again. Now you are new on on the on on some social media channels, which we can share about in a moment, but. You know, there are there are questions that people have. There will be people saying, "Oh, you know, this isn't." You know, I've had a few people say to me, "Oh, no, it's not good for you." In fact, before we go, that's uh, you know, someone said to me, "Oh, it's not good for you because it clears out good bacteria from your gut." But actually, right. colonics also they, they 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 can clear out some of those things. But you told me before the butt re- the, the gut replenishes within every two days anyway, doesn't it? So, 
Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, often you'll find when people say, oh, but it can't be good for you because blah, 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 because it washes out all the good bacteria. That's a very, very common thing. That's usually somebody that doesn't want to tube up their bum. Um, <laughs> and uh, fair enough, you know, where we are, the thing is, we're all at choice, aren't we? Um, and it's not discriminate, but the colon is a very interesting organ because, in the same way that we have reflexes on our feet, our hands, and our ears, we also have reflex points all the way around the colon. So, um, colonics are great for toning the gut. So, the gut, the, the large intestine. Um, it's got muscles that way and that way, so horizontally and vertically. And when the water goes in, it expands and contracts and expands and contracts. And as it does that, it encourages um, what we call peristalsis, which again can, goes further up the chain, which I can talk more about. That's a separate subject. Um, and yes, it will wash things out. Now, we have a mucus lining in there. So some of us um, believe that we have um, something called mucoid pluck, which is uh, the mucus lining um, in which we grow all our friendly bacteria and other bacteria and every four resides. Uh, we also hold on to toxins for many years. I know that, um, I mean, John Wayne died of, of, of uh, well, John Wayne died, as we all know. Um, and many moons ago, I saw um, a, um, a, a cross section of his bowel, which had like it had like about a pencil width all the way through it the rest of it was completely coated all the way around we need to but uh, cleanse our bowels so the thing about my black powder is that it um the black powder basically will clean the mucus it will draw toxins from the mucus and the old mucus and the stuck mucus and it allows the good stuff to kind of like grow again and it will pull toxins through and out so it gives you it gives your body a chance is what it does so yeah it'll wash out some good bacteria it washes out bad bacteria it washes out all sorts of things and it allows your body to start again to repopulate which is why i always give you probiotics when you um when you have a session and make sure there's electrolytes in the water so you're drinking water you're having your, your thing and you'll be fine you always feel great after a colonic some people feel, can feel a bit tired it's like going to the gym. Some people get energized after exercise. Some people get exhausted after exercise. But after a day or two, it repopulates and you have more energy than you've had. Bowel function works better. And bowel function isn't only about how many times a day you poop. You know, it's also about how well you utilize your food. You'll find people that suddenly say, I'm eating less. I'm not craving anymore. All of that stuff. And that's because you've washed away a lot of the bad eats and you're starting to feed the goodies. So... Yeah. Yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, amazing. No, you 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 got so many knowledge, knowledge bombs that you share, which is which is great, and it's and it's it's fantastic, and that's why I think whenever I um, you know, whenever I come and see you, it's always intriguing because it's you talk about you know a lot of the the stuff around sort of the mind, that, as you say, and about being happy and healthy, and but and so much of that is down to how we operate and how we feel, and our, our guts are key to key to that, and that's the reason why I want to get you on the podcast because people might think, what's this got to do with sales? Well, the reality is, or business, and the reality is, and as I know, is that if you don't feel your best, um, you don't give your best, and you won't be the the the, the performer that you want to be, and you won't be sharp and you won't be able to write the reports or create the proposals or do the work you need to do and invariably that stems from how your body is and what you what your body feels like and if you know if you put rubbish in and lead a lifestyle that is that is um you know and i've led that lifestyle in many perspectives you know for this over the time but you know if you lead that that lifestyle where you if you use your body, being honest, then the reality is don't be afraid, don't be surprised when your body doesn't give you your best performance back. And ultimately, if you want to be and achieve what you want to in business, we've got to try and give our bodies the best chance to perform. So um, that's why you do what you do. So look, so we're, we're coming to the end of the podcast, but where can people reach you then? So if they want to find out a bit more about you and they're intrigued by by you know, F- you know Felicity J and what you do and how you do it. Obviously, there's the chance that if they want to come down to Somerset in the UK, they can come and see you, which is great. You have got a waiting list, I know, which is um, because you're exceptionally busy. But where can people find out about you online as well? Well, I've uh, recently got a um, yeah, I joined the modern world finally. Um, I've then just stopped using the final facts. I I hasten to add. Uh, which is very amusing for a lot of people. So I have an Instagram account, which I've only just started, so there's not a huge amount of posts for it, which is Inside Out Healing UK. 
Um, I'll put a link to that. I'll put a link to that in the, in the show notes anyway as well. So. Thank you. Um, my website is www.insideouthealing.co.uk. Um, and you can reach me. I do do online consultations as well, which you can book through my webpage. Um, and that can be worldwide as well. Um, what else? Um, oh, I think I've got a Facebook account as well, but I'm not sure how to do all of that. There we go. Get, well, people can reach out. If they go to www.insideouthealing.co.uk, um, you said .co.uk. Yeah. Dot yeah. Dot yeah. They can get access yeah. to you from there. And look, I, I would definitely say this. Um, as someone that's worked with um, Phyllis over a number of years, she's helped me in, in lots of areas. Um, yeah, when I'm... Yeah, both just when they're having conversations and talking about things and been able to just feel cleaner and more sharper in my body. And I know, you know, she knows it as well. I don't always help myself with some of the things I do, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's, we're not perfect. We're all on a journey, right? But but doing something is better than doing nothing. And the reality is if you, if you focus on trying to improve your own well-being and health, you're going to be more sharper and more effective in the work you do from a business perspective. So, um Thank you so much for joining me today. You've been, um, I know you're a bit, you know, unsure about whether, but it's, you know, it's great to, to share your knowledge and your insights. You have so much knowledge and um, to share with the world. And I do hope more people can start to look, you know, especially if they, you know, they listen to this and feel, actually, I do feel a bit, un- you know, I've got this ailment or I've got this issue here or I've got that problem here. Like you say, 80% of it starts in the gut. So just, just give the- but it all starts. It all, it all starts in the gut. It's a matter of how, you know, yeah, everything, every element will start. Well, unless you have a physical injury, of course. Yeah. Uh, but healing and stuff like that is also about what happens in the gut. Yeah. So if they can get themselves to become a bit more aware of gut health and start to look at how the gut can affect their life and what they do, mm-hmm. then it will be uh, a big thing for them. And if they are, you know, it is one of those subjects people don't want to talk about. Of course, we're British. We're very much like, oh, we don't talk about, you know, sex and, and money and, 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 and toiletry habits. But actually, if they if they can start to, to get a bit more aware of their feeling, they've got some challenges or problems in those areas, then then reach out where it's fee, uh, where it's fist or, or other people. Just get some help to, to enable your body to perform better. Um, because the most important thing is we all are the same. I want people to be at their best so they can give their best and have their best times with loved ones. And I know you're the same in that respect. So, look, thank you so much for giving your time up this Bye. morning. Oh, and thank you so much for having me on here, James. It's been it's been enlightening and a great first experience. I'm glad that you were my first. <laughs> oh, there you go. I've heard that for a while. There we go. So we'll 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 leave that till the to, to the other part. But um, but no, it's all good. So look, um, thanks ever so much um, for, for this. Really appreciate it, and uh, look, really appreciate the chance for you to share your insights with people. And uh, yeah, helping people, you know, get learn more from out their gut so they can have better business lives. So thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. And I'm welcoming any questions that anybody wants to to, to post on my Instagram. I'll happily answer. Fantastic. Let you have a great day. Thanks, James. Thanks. Take care. Bye. So there you have it. That was uh, Felicity J. Um, incredible um, podcast. Um, really hope you've enjoyed it. Just all about. It. And I did want to do this podcast because we are our bodies are what we do in business. And if you want to become stronger and fitter and healthier and achieve more than knowing how your body operates and what you do is going to be critical to that. So she's an overview that I've used and I know you'll get uh, a huge amount of value from as well. If you want to find out how to make your gut work more better, more effectively for you, then, then take a look at what Felicity has to say. But that's it from this week. Hope you've enjoyed the podcast. If you have, then please like and subscribe it and share it with other people so we can help lots of other people achieve the results they want. That's it till next week. Take care. See you soon.